Hi there, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Jacob Modak podcast. Um, Talks from the heart with me, Jacob Modak. Um, I thought for this first one, it might be a good idea to just, while I'm sat here in this sort of in this in the office <laughs> section of the uh, the house, to just start off with an explanation of why am I doing this? Um, like th- there was quite a lot of inner debate and sort of um, inward ping pong going on to and fro as to whether I should do this or whether it was a good idea. And um, of course, being a holistic health practitioner with the Czech Institute, um, that a certain amount of what ways could I come up with to promote myself and my coaching and just get the message of holistic health out there a bit more. That certainly factored in. But at the same time, um, I was just also thinking about what other ways can I just be of service? And one of the things that just really popped into my head is I really like having conscious conversations with people. So that title really kind of stuck with me. I thought about it for a while, but it really did fit. Because... And what I mean by conscious conversations is having a talk with someone consciously, just being aware of like, I experienced this and I learned this from it. or And it doesn't even need to be that deep or serious. You could just be goofing around and talking about some really silly shit and just having a great old time. But you're also aware that life has other sort of dimensions to it. But just for this moment, we're just... We're just focusing on the more light-hearted side of things. And that's totally fine too, but it's conscious as well. So there was it, it felt like a natural progression. And um, it's also a great way to just pick people's brain and then put it out there for the world for other people to learn from. So in terms of w- the kinds of people that I'll be talking to, uh, a lot of it's going to center around health, being a holistic health practitioner. And with the dance world being the sort of primary area where I'm working to bring my holistic knowledge to, and I have quite a few quite a few friends in the dance world anyway, um, I th- the chances are high <laughs> that quite a few of the guests are going to... Um, be the types of people that could be dubbed as a very uh, could be dubbed as twinkle toes in some 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 kind of respect um but even in that even when talking to them there will be an aspect of how can holistic health fit into the dance world what their experience of health was gr- in the dance world and how it can how holistic health can just benefit the dance world in a in a in a greater sense and there's also going to be some other there's probably going to be some other people that aren't involved in dance um but everyone has a story everyone's got a lot of things to that they've experienced and a lot of things that they've learned and just to tie all conscious conversations everyone can everyone has something to say so it's i I like the fact that that's not very limiting or putting people into a box or kind of shutting out a certain sort of sphere of um people like no we're just going to talk to this kinds of those kinds of people or these kinds of people and that in a way is very liberating and quite exciting too so before talking a little bit further and saying how um like obviously there's going to be promotional aspects like about the kind of coaching that I can offer and the workshops that I'm running but I think a little explanation of just how I kind of got to this point for those of you who don't know me I think that might be helpful so I kind of, I I grew up very sporty um growing up doing sports but at quite at school quite a lot and I got interested in fitness quite early. Fitness actually came before sports. Um, but I've been doing martial arts for quite a long time as well. So Thai boxing, 
was my main focus. Um, from 16 years old onwards, and I really, really got obsessed with it and really, really put a lot of effort in. And that really started to get me learning about holistic health because when you're doing something athletic, and I'm sure dancers are the same, um, f or any kind of person that grows up doing s something athletic, you want to perform better, you want to do better. So you start researching ways to get better. And then the topic of health comes up because if you can't actually <laughs> if you can't actually have your body working the way that you want then it's not going to perform the way that you want so i got an exposure early um however like leading up until when so from 16 till about 19 or 20 i was just completely and utterly consumed by martial arts that's all i was doing and but then at that point i realized that there was just there was just something in me that knew I didn't actually want to make like pursue a career being an athlete it just, for for whatever reason because for whatever reason it felt like some that I was supposed to go some other route and I've always had this very artistic dimension to me running alongside the physical one um I've always been writing and uh so writing journal entries since I was really young and then when I was in my first year of university, um, I don't say that with massive amounts of pride. I didn't finish university, but that's a whole other that's a whole other that's a whole other conversation. But in the first year that I was at university, um, I wrote my first fiction book. And then a light bulb came on and I was like, Oh, this is something that I need to be doing for the, as well. So basically the writing dimension really came on. And now being a holistic health practitioner, I'm definitely going to be blending the two with a health book. I've written a lot of fiction, but I want to write a health book too. Um, not a preachy one, just a very practical one as well. Um, but that's certainly going to be coming. Uh, and that, for that time, for a few years afterwards, that really became the focus. Like, let's how, how can I make writing the thing that I do? And I was still doing martial arts as well, but I started to explore other martial arts too. So I uh, started to explore Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and did that for three years as well. Um, but then, it, obviously I'm leaving quite a lot out, but in 2018, I got to a point where I just felt a shift. I knew I wanted to be very physical still, but emotionally, the way that I was using my physicality, I knew I wanted it to change. And I remember... Um, a few days before Halloween 2018, um, I just had this just just lightning bolt hit me and I was like, oh, you need to go learn to dance. And then I was terrified because, I mean, I just it was such a massive change, but I knew I needed to do it. But then my ego was just terrified of like feeling like feeling like a fool, not being able to do anything and just being like completely and utterly embarrassed and <laughs> shamed by the social environment that I was there around. Um, however, um, after a little mini WhatsApp pep talk from my sister, um, I just sucked it up and went to my first class. Um, Marko Stemenkovic, uh, wonderful, wonderful human being, amazing dancer, incredible teacher, and someone who I, I owe so much to because the place that I was in personally at that time before I went to his class was not the most optimal dance just just how he was just seeing the way that he moved and how free he was with the music really really touched me and really really helped me understand that there's now a physical path back to a sort of happy place and dance really saved my happiness in that way so it's um i just kept training with dance but then obviously the the 2020 shenanigans hit we shall leave it to that <laughs> we won't elaborate further we will just leave it that we'll just leave it at that the 2020 shenanigans happened and there was definitely a rethink and that was when i decided to join the czech institute um uh, five year holistic health academy um initially i was just doing the just doing some bit courses here and there to just sort of do it 
But then um, Matt Warden, who's one of the Czech faculty, su- suggested that I do... Well, he asked me about... He asked me if I knew about the Czech Academy because it's a much more sort of financially like logical way to actually do all the training and i had i didn't know anything about it so i had a look but then i felt this shift as well this was one of those other uh, other lightning bolt moments lightning bolt moments in my life where i realized oh all of this sort of personal development i've been doing over this time just pouring into myself i now want to share it with other people like it's just fundamentally important for me to share it with other people so now I want to go pro. I want to really learn from the best holistic health practitioners on the planet, which are those practitioners in the Czech Institute. And they are the best because they teach us to incorporate all the other specialists and people that are the best in their fields as well. So it's not like so it's not like some arrogant thing where everyone else is completely wrong and we're we're all the people that know the best. Like we need to incorporate the specialities and all the gifts and just wonderful things that everyone else can contribute and bring it all together in this melting pot of healing power, shall we say. Um, so in 2020, that was a big shift and I definitely, um, I just dove into that, down that line. But before I joined the academy... I needed to have a why. Why do I want to join the academy? It ne- it wasn't enough for me to be like, I just want to be really good and join the academy. Why? Why do I want to be really good? What is the fundamental reason why I'm doing all of this training? So I turned my brain off and tuned into my heart. Not thinking, just focusing on feeling. And what came up for me is I want to be the person that really helps to start building the bridge between the holistic health world and the dance world. Firstly, because dance really helped me save, sort of save my hap- own happiness, in, for lack of a better way of describing it. Um, but that bridge hadn't been built before. At like, And there's a lot of injuries going on in dance, a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression, but the, 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 the holistic knowledge ha- uh, has the answers to this. And as a th- and just as a thank you for what dance gave me, I know a lot about holistic health, so I want to help be a bridge and give that back to the dance world as much as I can. Obviously, with coaching and workshops and that, you're going to have to charge something because people need to live and all of that. But as much as I can do in on in online courses and workshops and making the coaching as affordable as possible. Uh, coaching on other people's programs I will I will do whatever I can to help the dance world get as healthy as humanly possible um, because it's so important for the dance for, for the dance world to be healthy because the healthier the dance world is the more that dancers can spread dance to the wider world and dance is such a fundamental part of being a human there are two in, there, there are two instincts in life in, from what I've in my that don't need to be taught the instinct to punch someone in the face when, when they're irritating you and the instinct to move to music those are just right there from birth so dance is completely innate and integral to the human condition uh, but that said the beca- dance be taken seriously and in a professional sense which when done right is just absolutely transcendent and you're watching god energy in motion the process to get there can be intensely stressful and like with the risk of injury being high and like the dancers not getting paid enough money causing a lot of mental stress which is then having physiological symptoms and there's a lot going on there and the holistic training that I'm receiving and all the holistic training that a lot of the other Czech practitioners and holistic health professionals and functional medicine doctors and all the rest of them are receiving can do so much to help these just, uh, as Einstein said, dancers are the athletes of God. Um, God has many athletes, but dancers are certainly among them. But just to help them be, do what they do the best that they can. So that is definitely a a, a fundamental driver for why I am focusing on bringing my holistic coaching to the 
um, to the dance world. And then following on from that, why am I doing the podcast? Well, I do know that dancers do listen to podcasts and I think this would be a great way for me to be able to get the message of what I'm doing out there to them and explain it probably because um, like no judgment, but it's not that well known. The Czech Institute training is not that well known. So sometimes you need to just be able have the time and have someone's ear to be able to explain what it actually is. Um, and also just bringing some of my dancer friends on and just having those discussions. What's your experience of health been like in the dance world? Like how, what are the issues? How could holistic health health and how could the Czech Institute training or all these different aspects like group coaching or individual coaching or the holistic lifestyle side, mental emotional work or the musculoskeletal and um, exercise program design and athletic performance side of the coin can help them depending on the individual. What does each individual need? How can this stuff be standardized into the institutions? So like, how can how can the institutions start scheduling their training so that the female dancers who the female athletes their the undulations of their natural hormonal cycle are taken into consideration so they're not having excess athletic demands put on their body when their hormonal profile is too low to support such intense work for example that's a big thing that needs that i would love to see change um if the, when there's proper understanding of the mechanics of anxiety and depression and how those how those can actually be addressed in a standardized way so that each sort of crop each year of dancers going through professional training at colleges don't come out more broken than when they went in because fitness and health are two different things as Paul Cech says you can be a fit sick person Fitness is just your physiological capability to do something. Health is a state of spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical harmony and well-being. So the question now is how can we start creating healthy dancers that are just as skilled at that, as opposed to just fit dancers? And when I say fit, just physically fit, physically able to do a certain skill. Just fit dancers that are skilled. How can we have the health component put in there? How can we do that? How can we standardize that? That is just my, like my, my soul is on fire to be able to figure out how to do that. Um, And I know how I do have the answers how to do that, but it's, it's, it's getting the, getting the, getting these holistic principles put in place. That is the thing. And, I mean, the, it will come in time. It's not about trying to step on people's toes or go in there like some anarchist and trying to like be like wagging your finger and telling people off. It's nothing like that. It's just to, like this is a more optimal way to do it. And the reason why we're doing it is for the sake and health and happiness of the people doing this art form professionally. So how can we support them the very best that we possibly can? Um, so that's definitely a massive driver for me. And one of the reasons why I I feel like doing this podcast, is, I think, will be helpful for making that happen. Um, I think that is enough of a ramble for now. Hopefully your ears are not bleeding <laughs> too badly listening to my voice uh thank you very much for listening to this first episode um there's going to be a balance like maybe there'll be some solo episodes where i go through some points of like these are some basic health things i think would be helpful for people to understand um and then some i'm going to work on doing some um podcasts with some guests where we have like a longer form discussion and I'll do my best to get those ones filmed as well and put up on YouTube so there's like a visual component because I know like I do like to watch podcasts I know other people like to do that too um but that is the the first episode that's kind of like the basic intro and a little background on me if you'd like to connect with me further my Instagram is 
um, Jacob Modak, J-A-C-O-B-M-O-D-A-K. My website is jacobmodakcoaching.com. In the shop section there, you'll find a um, a couple of video courses. There's a five-hour holistic mental health management for dancers course there, which is available for download. So it's a video course with an accompanying workbook. Um, so you can work through it at your own pace at home and it's very dense and really gets to the core of things and um, if you're struggling with mental health like anxiety, depression, negative body image I would strongly recommend you get that course, invest once put that workbook into practice and I really think that you'll be able to save yourself a lot of stress and pain and grief in the uh, as time goes on just working through that because um I have been exposed to some of the some uh, just amazing information in the Czech Institute and I've and uh learning and also studying integral theory from and Ken Wilber's work and I've really done my best to put that together applied to the dancer as well. So that is there and there's also a 1 hour video about um preventing knee and back pain so that's some basics about the musculoskeletal posture um side of things and uh, there's a short video there about the link between knee injury and uh digestion so the if you don't if you don't want to go for the big one then there's like a little cup short video that's a couple of quid but there's still some really practical tips there uh i'm hosting a workshop for dancers about injury prevention on on uh the 29th of january sunday 29th of january from 10 a.m till 6 p.m so if you go onto my instagram the link is in the bio to book in for that um you can go on the website as well there's a t there's a section that says live events you can book on there there's 15 people max capacity and this is the first one that i've set up for that but i plan on doing more and consistently doing them prevention rather than a cure invest once Learn the principles, apply the principles, and hopefully you can just save yourself thousands and thousands of pounds down the road, like with physio treatments or all the all the other pain p treatments and pain pills and all this stuff. We want prevention rather than a cure. If something's gone wrong and we need to do a little bit of cure in the mid to mediate, that's fine. The e holistic means everything's included, everything has its place. But what we want is prevention. We want to get to that place where. There's no pain, there's no injury, the body's working wh how we want it, the mind isn't going nuts, the body is exactly where you want it, so it can perform just how you want consistently. And there's the knowledge there to notice when things may come out of whack so they can be prevented before they happen. So that's what that workshop's about. Just it, just invest once and just just come once and you, that you'll ha you'll generally have the principles like the idea is just come once versus repeat customers all the time but the max capacity of 15 people is so that i can really have enough time for individual q a and really take a lot of time to explain things so people leave there really clear and um so the details for that are on the on the website so Thank you very much, and uh, I will see you in the next one, if it's a video. If it's another audio, then, uh, yeah, you shall hear me in your ear soon. Okay, have a wonderful day with whatever you're doing, and uh, thank you again for taking the time to listen.